Welcome people and welcome back to my YouTube channel and if this is your first time seeing one of my videos my name is Coco and on this channel I mostly speak about perfumes so if that's something that you're interested in you can go ahead click that subscribe button you know join the family thank you very much in today's video as you can already see from the title my loves listen I have five yes five Middle Eastern fragrances that I bought recently that I think you might need in your collection so without the chat-ins without the jibber jabber let's get straight into the review my loves All I know. Welcome back my pebbles, listen, before you start, yes you, let me just address the elephant in the room, guys I did say that I was coming back slowly, okay, slowly. And if I do sound a bit nasally, let me do apologize. It's that time of the year again, you know, hay fever. Listen, suffering. Plants and grass are kicking my ass, okay? The swelling in my left eye has just gone down, guys. I, I'm suffering this year, okay? But we're not here about me, hay fever, or my absence on YouTube. We're here about perfume. So the first fragrance I want to talk to you guys about is called Ansome Gold, and this is by La Taffa Pride. This, don't know when this was launched, but I know it's a fruity floral fragrance. I heard about this fragrance from Kayleen. You guys might better know her as Aroma Dicto on TikTok and Instagram. If you're not following her, what are you doing actually? Go follow her, tell her I sent you. Come on, don't play with me. You, know, you guys know I recommend good people, yeah? Yeah. Let's get into the packaging real quick. Burgundy box. Listen, you see the bottle? This hair? Come out then. This? Heavy. If this falls on your toe, consider it broken. Because this is heavy. Listen to me. I need someone in the comment section to tell me a company that does better perfume packaging than Latafa or these Middle Eastern companies. Come on. Somebody. I'm waiting. Okay. Please. Latafa's packaging? Top tier. Now, let's get into what this smells like. On the first spray, listen, without even looking at the notes, it opens fruity fresh and I got two citruses. So what I got was I got the green rind from the bergamot and I got the sweet citrus from the orange blossom. Now the note that is actually listed in this fragrance is mandarin. And for those that know about mandarin, you know that it's sweet, it's juicy, it's tangy. And it also has this neroli like undertone. And for those that don't know, neroli is just this green bitter note. So I smelt this sweet citrus with this green undertone and the mandarin encapsulates all that with the pear just lurking in the background, you know, giving extra freshness. For the middle, there's rose, jasmine and candy. And listen, this is where I get the Middle Eastern feel of this fragrance because the jasmine in here, this is an Arabian jasmine, okay? It's sweet, it's sultry and it's sexy. And as for the rose, the rose is from the desert, yeah? Think about cutting, you know, freshly full bloom red roses that has this deep smokiness in it, yeah? But it's not overly smoky, yeah? It's nothing to smoke out of the fragrance, calm down. It just has this underlying, you know, this underlying smoky smell. And as for the candy in here, we all know it's marshmallow, but they can't actually list marshmallow in the lineup of this fragrance. Why do you ask? Listen, the religion practiced in the Middle East is Islam and any food that's said to be consumed should abide by the Islamic law. Marshmallow doesn't abide by that law. Why? Because it has gelatin and gelatin comes from pigs and that is haram, not halal. So candy is better suited. But the candy in here is sweet and fluffy. He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die. Sweet and fluffy with a hint of powderiness that's coming from the musk. Think about the little powder dusting that you have on top of the marshmallow. Yes, exactly that. As this fragrance begins to dry down, it gets so much creamier with the vanilla and all the other notes are still there, basking in their greatness. Oh my God, this smells extremely delicious. This definitely can be worn all year round, but I think it would thrive more in like the cooler, colder times. So like spring, autumn and winter, but if you wanna wear it in summer, just go light on the trigger, yeah? Spray lightly. And now for the comparison between Ansem Gold, Love Don't Be Shy, and I only have a sample of Oriana. Okay, so to me and my nose, Ansem Gold is more of a dupe or similar and along the same lines as Oriana than it is Love Don't Be Shy. Let me tell you why. And it's only in the opening. The difference is only in the opening, yeah? For Oriana, on the first spray, if I can actually spray, 
on the first spray for Oriana, you get more greenness and the bitterness coming from the Neroli, then the sweetness comes in. But when you do the first spray off Ansam, you get the sweetness, then the greenness. Does that make sense? But you see the dry down? It's the bloody same. Like if you spray each of these fragrances on each arm, you cannot tell in the dry down which is Oriana and which is Ansam. They smell the same in the dry down. Let me tell you something. I wore on some gold to the Beyonce concert in Sweden, but I layered it with My Way by Giorgio Armani. Oh my God, I smelled bloody amazing. And guess what? No one there smelled like me. I smelled so good. I even layered on some gold with Luxury Rouge by Riffs. You know, this is a dupe for Rouge Maliki by Giorgio Armani. Listen. It was still such an amazing combination. Don't think, don't get it twisted. Don't think that you need to layer this for this to be a banger. No, this is good on its own. I just like to experiment with my fragrances. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but this on its own, banger. Moderate sillage and projection with a eight hour plus longevity on my skin. Listen to me, this is a sweet, comforting and creamy scent. It's also fluffy and delicate, but it's still, Holds it on, okay? Yeah? Don't play with this. This is Ansem Gold. Next on the list, we have Tamima by La Taffa. This is known as a fruity floral fragrance for women. On the first spray, oh my God, you get this blast of a juicy fruit, but I am picking up hints of tartness and that is coming from the rhubarb. There's a lot of juicy fruits in the opening, but the two notes that's shining on my skin are the strawberries and the pineapple. The succulent watermelon that's in the middle is giving this fragrance an aquatic feel. Think watery fruits. Like say you have a bowl of fruits and then you go outside to wash them, but you wash them under the hose. You know, yeah, you get a hose and watery fruits. At this point, the watermelon is now fighting the strawberry for the number one spot. Why you ask? Because the strawberry knocked out the pineapple. Yeah. So the number one spot now is between the watermelon and the strawberry. The rose that's in the middle of this fragrance is just adding this feminine, soft floral touch. As this fragrance begins to dry down, the musk comes in and mutes everything. Think about the musk as a blanket, you know, a blanket covering the fruit, making this fragrance like a musky, watery, fruity, floral fragrance. Yeah, this does lean a tad bit more on the feminine side, but you know, as I always say, wear whatever fragrance you want whenever you want, because hello, it's your fragrance, it's your money. Don't let people tell you what you can and can't wear, okay? Don't. This fragrance is suitable for summer as all the fruits will bask in the sun as it settles on your skin. Moderate sillage and projection with a longevity between anywhere between five and seven hours. Don't let the black bottle scare you off yet yeah? because I saw this and I was like, oh my God, I don't want to buy this because maybe this is going to be like an oud dominated fragrance yet. Yeah. Don't be like me. Don't let the black bottle scare you off. No, this is an amazing fruity balm of a fragrance. Okay, yeah. This is Tamima. As I said the name just now, I'm like, is it Tamima or Tamima? Do you know what? Tam somebody. <laughs> Next up we have Lux Verde by Empire. This is known as a woody aromatic fragrance for men and women. I'm sorry, can we take a minute just to look at this packaging? Or you look at the lid, look at the lid and then the bottle the pack oh my guys i am sorry what did i say about middle eastern fragrances yeah don't, don't piss me off don't play with me this opens with sweet did you see that atomized oh my god my background is white okay hold on look oh <laughs> again oh my god oh my god i am sorry i I am sorry. D Fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Cop. D Whew. This opens with bitter oranges and a sweet yet tart petty grain that adds an extra tinge of green in the opening. So we have a bright and citrusy opening that's not too overpowering, but the brightness does get dimmed by the dominant, potent, vigorous, idolic jasmine that's in the middle. 
Funnily enough, the first time I smelled the fragrance that this is duping, I thought it was tuberose. And then, you know, when I did more research, I was like, oh no, it's just jasmine. A very indolic jasmine with underlying sweetness. There's an enchanting aroma that begins to permeate the air as the indolic jasmine merges with the creamy and alluring ylang ylang. Oh my God, this, magnificent. It's like them coming together, you know, it's like, it's exuding this, this seductive, carnal, you know, like an animalic vibe. Oh, I, guys. As for the lily and the pink pepper, they add this touch of um, natural earth-like spice to this fragrance. As this fragrance begins to dry down, a stunning swell of creamy vanilla gets incorporated with the warm balsamic benzoin. My God! This fragrance is bloody brilliant. Oh my, oh my God. An amazing, creamy, floral, vanillic bomb of a fragrance. This is an exceptional fragrance. There's nothing sharp in here. There's nothing off-putting. Listen, it's just blended seamlessly. I won't lie to you. Like when I think about like clean girl aesthetics, this comes to mind. Yeah, this does enormous sillage and projection with an eternal longevity don't piss me off as you hear the name of this fragrance lux verde you can tell what fragrance is duping this is duping vert malachite by armani and what a spot-on dupe it is this is most suitable for spring and autumn but you could get away with wearing it all year round this is lux verde Next up, we have a freshie. We have Le Adventure Femme by Al Haramein. What did I tell you about the packaging from these Middle Eastern companies? Hello? Hello? Don't piss me off. Don't. Hello? Don't piss me off. Don't. Don't piss. Oh my God. Don't. Hello? T this is known as a fruity floral fragrance for women. Hold on to that. This opens rather fruity, yeah? There's, oh my God. There's fresh bergamot, there's juicy pineapple, there's succulent black currant, oh my God. Fresh, juicy, and sweet. Don't piss me off, do not piss me off. The rose is a prominent floral in the middle for me because oh my God, it took over the middle. And it's this fresh, lush rose and you can get some woodsiness coming from the cedar. As for the dry down, the rose does get softened by the powderiness from the musk and the sandalwood, but then the fruits are just still standing, yeah? They're still bright, they're still cherry, they're still there. I absolutely love this fragrance, like fresh out of the shower, grab and go. You know them ones? Yes, they say that this is a dupe for Creed Aventus for her. I see it, I'm not gonna lie. You know, 90, 95%, but this to me is more crisp and more fresh up, if that makes sense. I must say, the dry down for this is a tad bit manly. Now hold up, I don't care that it's manly because I wear fragrances just because I like fragrances, okay? I don't wear fragrances because of the gender it's assigned to. I know that this fragrance says femme, yes, but it does have a tinge of masculine dry down, yeah? But hear me out. Why am I telling you this? Because I think as a fragrance reviewer, I should tell you all aspects of the fragrance when I'm giving my review, you get me? I don't care that it has a manly dry down, but maybe someone on here cares that it has a manly dry down and they go, oh, you just saved me a bit of money because I like my feminine fragrances and I like nothing with a masculine dry down, do you know what I mean? But I'm here just letting you know, even though it says femme, it has a manly dry down. I don't care, but I'm just letting you know. Eight hours plus longevity on my skin with an enormous sillage and projection. Oh my God, this, this is a banger, okay? I layered this with Zara's Vibrant Leather for her recently and let me tell you something. You see the juicy fruits in here, amplified the red currants that's in here and the patchouli that's in here in the dry down. Oh my God, it gave this an oomph. Oh, Lord have mercy. Some people say that they get this sharp, synthetic lemon cleaner smell. Listen, I let my fragrances macerate for time before I actually spray and start testing and I don't get those smells, so I'm extremely happy, yeah? I'm good, honey. So, do you like the Creed smell but don't like the Creed price? Buy that one, yeah. Yeah, Le Adventure Femme by Al Haramein. <laughs>
And closing the show, we have Mora by Latafa. Oh my God, guys, look at the packaging for this. Stunning. Talking about packaging, look at the dent. Look at the, please, guys, how am I doing? <laughs> look at the dent, please. Instead of me coming on here and telling you guys how amazing this smells, I've just been using it and procrastinating. The opening for this, is on the sweeter side because the lychee, yeah, is on the sweeter side rather than being on the tart side. You do get a, you know, a little nose tickling sensation from the pink pepper, but the rose, oh my God, the rose is the main character in this fragrance. Come here, come here, come here. Listen to me, why do you guys continue to compare every fragrance that has lychee and rose to Delina? Aren't you lot tired? Unina tired. Jeez, I am sick and tired of the comparison to Delina. Delina doesn't even smell good. Com I said what I said. As the name suggests, Silky Rose, this is a nice, soft, silky pink rose. It's like, it's lush, it's full bloom, it's beaming. It's just a nice, soft, silky pink rose. <laughs> the middle is all powder and soap, yes? You heard me. The musk is super powdery with the lily of the valley turning a tad bit soapy. As for the dry down, creamy rose blended in with creamy vanilla and the patchouli just steps in to ground this fragrance. Let me describe this to you, yeah? It's a Sunday, we do reset on Sundays, yeah? It's time to wind down, it's time to go to bed. But you're not, you're not there yet, you get what I mean? You know what you do? You go and you run yourself a bath and you pour in your rose scented body oil and shower cream in there, yeah? Cause we're sticking with the rose theme, yeah? You come out, pat yourself dry, use your rose body cream. What do you slip into? You slip into one of those nice little tiny pink silk dressing gowns. Yes, sis. Because we're celebrating. What are we celebrating? We're celebrating you, yeah? Self care, yeah? You already found what you wanted to watch on Netflix. Hello? We do this, yeah? All you have to do is click play. So you go to your kitchen and then you scoop out some creamy vanilla ice cream. You go to sit down on your plush sofa and the ambiance around you, your soft skin against the silk dressing gown, you smelling like rose, this is what it smells like. It's soft, it's rosy, it's creamy, it's powdery. Silky Rose is a fragrance I think you need in your collection. Moderate sillage and projection with a seven hour longevity on my skin. This to me is as well suitable for spring and summer. Listen, get you a bottle of this. See my dent? Get you a bottle of this. This is Mora by Latafa. Well, there you have it, my loves. My reviews on five Middle Eastern fragrances that I bought that I think that you might need in your collection as well. Yes, get them in your collection, okay? Listen, I will forever be an avid supporter of Middle Eastern fragrances, okay? Because if you can give me a banging fragrance at a fraction of the cost of these designer niche fragrances, I'm, I'm gonna support you forever, I'm sorry? I want to smell good without breaking the bank. I will forever say this, okay? Well, this is where I say my goodbyes, my love, hopefully not for long. <laughs> If you enjoyed watching this video, which I really hope you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up by clicking that like button. What do I want you to comment down below? You know what? Comment down below and tell me your favorite Middle Eastern fragrance or tell me a Middle Eastern fragrance that you think that I should try. There's so many out there. Oh my God. There's so many out there. But tell me which one you think I should try. Share this video with a mate. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I guess I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Hear me out, yeah? I know that we're all entitled to our own opinions and that. But sometimes when I see people chatting fragrance nonsense, I just want to be like, shut up. Like, just, just shut up. Especially in TikTok. The TikTok girls, oh my God, they piss me off so much. <laughs> I'm here watching a fragrance TikTok and this girl, she just, <laughs> guys, she was reviewing Zara fragrances. Tell me why she took up a Zara fragrance and she goes, guys, this is Oriental and this is a dupe for Flower Bomb. And I'm like, a, a dupe for who? I'm sorry. So I'm like, let me go through the comments to see if anyone corrected her. Tell me why this other girl was like, oh no, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Oriental is a dupe for Black Opium. I'm sorry. I, I just came off the app. I, 
And it also went viral because that TikTok had over, I think, 100,000 likes. And I'm like, come on. How? How? <laughs> Wait, how did I get here? How did I get here? Oh, yes. I got hair because you know me, I like to stray. <laughs> People are saying that this is a dupe for Elizabeth and Rose by Penn Halligan's Listen. No, it's not. I dug this up. So this, oh, I know I should have given you guys a video of this ages ago from when I did my How Fetty video. If you've not seen that, I'll leave it up here for you to watch and in my description box below. But yes, this is just a scent library from Penn Halligan's. I have Elizabeth and Rose here. Yeah, it doesn't smell like it. It it doesn't. And for you lot that keep saying that this smells like Delina, no it doesn't, okay? Not every fragrance that has lychee and rose is Delina. Let me get off of here before I get angry, because, yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>